Hello and uh, welcome back to the channel. Hey, I'm Ron with Ideal Industries and uh, welcome to my shop. And in this segment, we're going to talk about testers and meters, not datacom stuff. And I'm going to cover the Ideal basic uh, uh, testers and meters and digital multimeters we have, which we call our Resi Pro line, which is kind of our introductory level of testers. And if you're looking for test equipment that uh, is uh, much more accurate or does more things, uh, please check out the Ideal website. You'll find that we have uh, testers to cover a lot of uh, applications out there. Uh, and when I look at this uh, group of testers, you know, these are testers that uh, just about anybody can afford. I mean, they start in the 20 some dollar range and go up from there. Um, but they're great little meters that most of us could use for working around the house, so they're great for the remodeler or the homeowner, and also for that entry-level pro kind of person that's looking for their first kind of meters that they might be wanting to buy out in the industry. So these are great products, and uh, the first one we're we'll start here with in this segment is dedicated to the 61-310 tester. And we're going to show you a close-up of that, and I'm going to walk you around the dot. Here's a close-up view of the 61-310, and you can get a good uh, look at the face of the tester. And of course, there's the part number on the tester right there. And of course, we have some openings in here for to put the test leads. We have obviously a dial that tells us a bunch of stuff around it, and I'll show you what all this means. There's a whole button if you want to take a reading and hold it, and of course, then obviously a display up top. Now, when I look at the tester, one of the things I'm going to show you on the tester right there it says Cat 2. And you need to understand something about where these testers are designed to be used. And uh, a Category 2 tester tells me it's a tester that is uh, designed to be used and safe to use inside of a home uh, through, you know, basically branch circuits. So if I'm testing electrical lines in the house or uh, lighting lines or appliances, uh, the tester is designed for that. Uh, it also could do low voltage applications as well, where a Class 1 tester is designed for low voltage applications only, you know, telecommunications circuits, things like that. Of course, Class 3 gets us up into the electrical breaker panels and then uh, class 4 beyond that but uh, uh, that's so this is a tester that's great for what we're going to do inside of a home now um one of the first things we need to do is put some leads in it, and uh, you get some test leads, and the black lead always goes into the one that says common. The red one can go actually either on either side, depending on what you're trying to measure. Now, right above this one here, it says 10A, indicating 10 amps and it's DC amperage. The tester does not do AC amperage, and if I'm going to measure up to 10 amps, I need to be in that opening with my red lead. Over here, you'll see temp. Uh, uh, you'll see a V for uh, voltage, uh, an omega symbol for uh, resistance, and of course a little M and big A, which means milliamps of current. So in most cases, it's going to be over here in the red one. I mean, on the on one on the right. Okay, so it should look like that when you get ready to do most of your testing. Now, the first thing we might do, we go do a test, is check to make sure the meter's working. And you'll see a symbol right here, which is a diode setting. And right next to it is kind of an audible setting. I'm going to take the tester and set it into that audible setting. And uh, you'll see up top here the testers. This is showing me uh, an open is what that that is indicating to me uh, by the tester. So in other words, the tester uh, is seeing a, uh, a uh, an open circuit uh, and can't measure it. It's too big of a resistance to measure. Now these testers, if I take the test leads and touch them together, the test the tester should go to zero. And it's making an audible sound that my uh, that I'll hear indicating that it sees continuity and I really don't even have to be looking at the test drop I've been looking for the audible sound okay and um, um, uh, and that's what that's for and this tells me the tester is working uh, and it's safe to use now and make some measurements and then one of the first things you're always taught is make sure the tester's working because uh, it could be the test leads or the tester itself is not working okay now um, Let's go test this at the top here. It is off now. And then uh, when you look at some things we can measure uh, with the tester, and one of the things I guess we should measure is maybe that diode setting since we had it on that diode setting. And if I'm going to test a diode, again, the tester's showing me an open here. A diode is a device that only lets current flow through it really in one direction only. And that little black deal there on that board is a diode. So if I take my two test leads and I touch them across the diode, and I get no reading at all in the tester. That's telling me that the die will lo won't let any current flow through it in that direction. Now, if I reverse the test leads and get them opposite, now it's giving me a reading and showing me about a half an ohm here. And that's indicating the tester that that diode is working because it is giving a reading at least one of the two uh, directions. So a diode's good if it gives you a reading in one of the two directions. Okay.
Now let's turn that back to off and uh, maybe now let's take a look at the DC stuff here. Now over here you see DC voltage and we see uh, 2, we see 20, 200 and 600 volts. This will measure up to 600 volts DC, either AC or DC. You also see over here battery and it says 1.5 volts for those you know, AA and AAA batteries. And of course there's a 9 volt battery setting there too. So if I'm going to measure DC, which is as simple as a 9 volt battery, but I'm going to use one of these settings over here to see the difference in uh, these different settings here. Now in order to measure DC voltage properly we have to set the tester at the next highest setting we are suspecting that we're going to measure. So a 9 volt battery should be someplace between 2 and 20 volts. Okay, And if we take a look at a 9 volt battery over here and uh, take our test leads and the bigger of the two spots on that battery is the negative lead and I push the positive lead here I get uh, 9.63 volt DC volts here being measured. And uh, uh, which is kind of what I would expect. And if I flip the leads accidentally and get them backwards on the positive or the negative, the negative and the positive, then uh, the tester gives me now a negative reading and indicating I might have my leads backwards. Now, if I took the tester and set it into two and make a test now, the tester is going to give me that, in, that overload indication with that one on the far left over like there and uh, that is not good. So obviously we're measuring something above it, so it's, we want to be above 20. Now on the opposite side, if I had it at 600 and I make this same test, again it's above 9 volts, so it's going to give me a reading, but it's not quite as accurate. It's not 9 point something. It's not rounded up to 9. So depending on what uh, setting you have it here will change the accuracy you have in your meter. And if you want an auto ranging tester, you can buy those and uh, we don't have to worry about what setting it's in. It's just in voltage. Okay. All right, now I'm going to turn that off, and that's a basic DC voltage that we could uh, measure in, uh, uh, in the home or around the house. Now, if I want to measure some AC stuff, I can uh, take an electrical outlet plug here, and the tester has two settings for AC over here, AC voltage, and we've got 200 and 600. And obviously, in most cases, we're going to be at 200 volts if you're working with 120-volt circuits uh, inside the homes. And if I take the tester and just set the leads into the outlet there, it's going to give me a reading, and that's pretty close to 120 volts there. Uh, by the way, if you want to uh, take that tester, and it's, again, it's reading 120 volts, and if I moved it to 600, it's going to give me another reading, but again, the accuracy is not quite what it was. I lost the decimal points there. Okay, And if you want to actually hold the reading, and other, for instance, I can't like, read the meter, and I want to hold it into here, then I just hit the hold button you'll see the whole button kind of came on over there and when I take the leads out of the uh, electrical outlet it's still gonna give me the reading that we were looking for okay so uh, that's the whole function and again if I push it one more time it's gonna take it away and it's kind of completely gone away okay and uh, so that's basic AC measurements with the tester again I'll turn it back off uh, we can obviously measure some resistance with the meter so we have ohms over here and when I look at the ohm settings we got 200 2K, which means 2,000, 20K uh, means 20,000, 200,000 ohms, and the 20 with a big M means mega ohms or millions of ohms. Okay? Well, anything above that indicates an open to the tester. Now, if I'm going to measure resistance in something, we can measure resistance in a lot of things between the resistance in a wire or checking a fuse or a switch or something like that for continuity. And I have some little resistors on this little board as well over here. And and uh, right now we have it in 200 and the tester is indicating open because we haven't got the test leads across anything. And I see two little uh, resistors here and I put, if I took the test leads across one of the resistors, whoops, it gives me a reading and it's, um, it's about 180 ohms is what it's indicating there. Now, uh, which is, well, and if I could read the little uh, um, the stripes on the resistor, it would indicate that's what it's supposed to be. Now, the two resistors here are actually uh, tied together. It comes in here, comes to this connection, and through the printed circuit board, it ties into this resistor to that point and comes here. So these two resistors are in series. <clears throat> and uh, if I take my test lead and touch it to the other end there, you saw a quick reading. And then the tester went to an uh, overload reading. And the reason is, is because these are both 108 ohm resistors, so two of them together in series should be around 360, but I've got it in the 200 setting here. So what I need to do is move that setting to 2K, that means 2000 ohms, and now when I take a uh, new uh, reading here with the tester, it's going to give me a reading, it says 0.35 
eight. Okay. Now, since we're in the K setting or thousands, we need to take this decimal point. We're measuring uh, 358 thousands uh, of, 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 or 350 thousands of a volt. So it, it, what it basically means is we got to move the decimal point three points to the right. So uh, it actually is reading 358 uh, ohms, I should say, not volts, ohms. Okay. And we take the tester, it goes off again. So again, if I have it in a higher setting over here, maybe I'll move this to uh, uh, 200K and take that same reading with the tester. Again, my accuracy is not going to be as good as it used to be. Now it says 0.2. And since we're in 200K, we'd have to move this decimal point again, three decimal points to the right, indicating 200 ohms. Okay. So again, it's... Uh, uh, not quite as accurate because again we may not have it in the right setting here you always want to go at the next highest setting you suspect that you're going to be uh, measuring and again we'll take that and, and turn that back to off here now um i and by the way when i measure resistance some other things i should point out too so let's put it back down to 200 here and we want to measure the resistance uh, across say this receptor of this little switch here if I want to do that, I can. I, again, I put it at 200 ohms, and I take my two test leads and I put it across the switch, and uh, it uh, basically goes uh, to zero on me there. That's indicating the switch is good, and it's got a circuit. Now, if I turn the switch off, it should give me virtually no reading at all, which, again, is indicating an open there. Okay? And again, if the switch is closed, uh, the tester should go back down to zero there indicating that, again, the switch is working properly. Okay. Uh, if we wanted to uh, check, uh, say, the resistance across, the, or see if this, this uh, cord is working here, uh, the test leads, you can buy little uh, boots, alligator boots, that will be insert over the test leads themselves and turn those into little alligator clips. Okay. And if I clip them across, again, my component video cable here, and take a measurement here. And uh, now the tester's going down to, uh, looks about 2 ohms there, 0.2 ohms, so a pretty small resistance. But again, not quite zero, but I want to see something there. So it's indicating there's continuity across that, that wire that we want to measure. And uh, even if we wanted to uh, go back here and uh, measure, say, a fuse, we could take a fuse here that we want to measure and again take the test leads and go across it and take a reading with this and it's showing me about well, pretty close to 5 ohms across that uh, little fuse so the fuse is working so there's a lot of reasons why we might actually use that resistance setting uh, on the tester to measure a number of things as we're tr uh, troubleshooting circuits so here I'm going to turn this all back off again and um, <clears throat> One of the things we can measure with the tester is current. So I'm going to bring my little board back in and I'm going to put my battery in my little board here. And the battery has a little potentiometer over here that will allow me to uh, vary the amount of uh, current flowing through this printed circuit board. And there's some test leads right here that I'm going to attach the tester to. Now, when you're measuring current in a circuit, uh, DC currents here, and it, I'll, I'm going to turn the tester to DC, and I'm going to go to 200 milliamps here. Um, you got to understand the tester needs to be part of the circuit, so uh, the current actually has to flow through the meter. And what are the the reasons these testers don't read high amounts of amperages basically is because it's really not safe because the amperage has to flow. Could you imagine 200 amps in a circuit uh, uh, circuit panel uh, flowing through this? It's actually not safe. Well, you want to use clamp meters for those applications. But for little DC, uh, little printed circuit boards, things, these, these testers work great. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the other test lead to the other lead on the bottom here. And that lights up my little light here on my board. And it's indicating I'm pulling about 6 milliohms of current, because uh, again, I'm at the 200 milli, uh, milliamp setting. So it's somewhere under milliamps, 6, six milliamps. Okay. Now if I turn my knob, my light gets a little brighter. And my current flow goes up, and if I turn it all the way up, the light gets pretty bright, and we're pulling pretty much 20 milliamps of current here at this point. And if I turn it back down, the amperage here will go down as well. And again, the light gets a little dimmer as we do that. Okay. 
So here again, the current is actually flowing through the, the uh, tester itself. And a word of warning, if you have the tester in this setting, and you happen to hit voltage, AC or DC with it, uh, we're gonna uh, fry the little fuse inside the tester, which is not a bad thing necessarily, you just have to replace the fuse. And I'll show you a little later uh, how you would go about doing that. All right, so now we're gonna just turn this off, or if I left it on and just removed one of these leads, the light would go out and the tester goes to zero, okay? Now, I'm gonna take that, set that aside, and I'm gonna take uh, uh, the, this and set aside, and I'm gonna take these leads out of the tester and show you one other function uh, that you have with this tester, and that is temperature. Now, the tester will come with a, uh, a thermocouple. And when you look at the thermocouple, you'll see a negative and a positive on that thermocouple uh, on this portion that plugs into the tester. And you'll notice that these kind of line up uh, with those two openings there. And we wouldn't want to plug it into these two. We want to plug it into these two with the negative one over here plugging into the common one. So we're just going to set, insert that in there like that. And the other, the very tip of this little is, the, is our sensor itself that is is actually going to measure the temperature. So now I'm taking the tester, I put it in Fahrenheit, and the tester is reading um, somewhere around 69 or 70 degrees for me. Okay, And uh, the tester may take a few seconds to settle on the temperature, uh, uh, but it, uh, it will eventually settle down. And of course if I put my hand on the tip of this it should actually go up quite a bit too. So uh, again, that's how we go about measuring temperature with these little thermocouples. And if you happen to get a thermocouple that wasn't calibrated with the tester, well, it may not be quite as accurate. Uh, you can calibrate these to a no with a known uh, 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 thermometer, or there are ways of adjusting the, the uh, accuracy on, th on the temperature inside the meter. And you can look for Ideal's website on uh, how to actually do that. And, that's, uh, and again, we could do it in, in Celsius as well. All right, and there's your basic temperature connections we would work with a tester. <coughs> now the tester <coughs> has a rubber boot on it, and if we need to, uh, for whatever reason, change out the batteries or work on something in the tester, we can take that rubber boot off. The testers have these little stands that allow the tester to stand up if you need it to stand up uh, uh, and look at it. And then we see some uh, uh, a uh, pocket back here that we can grab these two screws out of. drop that off and there's our battery that comes out the back of it okay and occasionally you might have to replace the 9 volt battery obviously the tester uh, doesn't come on when you turn the knob on it could be just the battery is dead in it um, and then also as if you look at the two screws here inside of this if I want to get inside the tester because I've blown the fuse <clears throat> or I want to make maybe make that adjustment on the temperature probes. I would remove those two screws that would open up the case itself and you will find something holding your little fuse that you would have to replace and just pop that fuse out and put a new one in. If it's no longer measuring DC amps, that's what you're going to have to do. And there's some varistors in there that we can make some adjustments on the temperature as well. So there you go, that is the 61-310, and it's a great uh, basic digital multimeter. Uh, again, uh, used uh, for around the home to uh, do those projects for lighting and electrical circuits and, um, and appliances. So, uh, Thanks again for coming to another segment of terminating low voltage cables, but in this case we did some tester meter stuff. Again, I'm Ron with Ideal Industries, and uh, thanks for coming.